Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Are you hungry? Are you poor? Well, then this is the video for you. Well, yeah, it's the video for you. Um, look, I'm the king of cheap. And today I'm about to prove it. Now, there's no reason that in these tight economic times that you cannot save money at the grocery store and still eat very well. And today I'm, I'm going to prove that to you by just uh, sharing with you some things I learned from my father, who was a child of the Depression. Yes, I'm that old. And my mother, who lived with a child of the Depression, he was always told to conserve, conserve, conserve. He had seven, eight mouths to feed, my mother and father did. The whole object here is how many people can you feed on a small amount of money? So I want to I wanna show you how to stretch your food dollar. I've had a lot of demand for my cooking videos to come back because, you know, I'm frugal when it comes to computers and I'm frugal when it comes to cooking. And hopefully the meal I'm about to make for you will make your mouth water and make you want to go home and or be at home and, and cook something like this for your family. I'm I'm a scratch cooker. I cook from scratch. There's very little stuff I use out of a packet anymore because it just tastes better when you make it homemade. And honestly, it doesn't take that much longer. I can make a meal, a scratch meal from beginning to end in about 30 minutes. I've gotten so, you know, you repet, repetition is key. You learn how to cook. So come along. I want to share this video with you and show you what I did. And then uh, we'll, we'll come back and talk about it. I'm the king of cheap, right? And the economy has just been, it's horrible right now. Let's all admit it. So what I want to do is show you one of the ways I stretch dollars like crazy. I learned this from my parents, you know. You can still eat good and not spend a lot of money to eat. And today is a shining example of that. <clears throat> today what we're going to do is make a simple pot of beans lima beans okay you can choose any beans you like pinto lima you can get the 15 bean soup mix basically these recipes are all pretty much the same now what I did what you don't know that I did about a week and a half ago is I bought a big old smoked ham pre-cooked pre-smoked ready to go I think we bought a it was probably a 15 pound ham or a 10 pound ham for a buck 59 a pound. So you buy meat in bulk when it's on sale and then you divide the meat up yourself and freeze it and save it for later. It keeps for months if not years. This ham we kept fresh and I just sliced it. And we've been eating off of it all week. We've had, for example, ham steaks with eggs. We've had ham and eggs, scrambled eggs. We've had ham sandwiches out of this ham. We've had um, ham and potato soup. You know, it's winter time right now. Well, it's not winter, it's fall. It's getting cold right now. We like soups uh, with lots of body in them that warm you up and fill you up. As you can see, I'm, I'm filled up quite well. So what today I'm going to show you to do is my basic recipe for beans. And I love lima beans. You may or may not, but you can modify this to, to suit your needs. So there's not going to be a lot of FaceTime in this video because I cannot get the shot in of me cooking with my limited, and you can do this with limited uh, kitchen space as well. I've got very limited kit counter space and I'm gonna show you how I do it. The key to any cooking or meal prep is to have a clean area before you start. So the first thing I did was clean the kitchen because I cannot stand a dirty kitchen when I'm trying to cook. It just makes for craziness. So we'll get the recipe started. I'll edit the video as needed as we go along. And I'll try and I'll try and talk about what it is that I'm doing. You're gonna need some things, okay? So you're gonna need chicken stock. And I just get the chicken stock or chicken broth from my local store. You're gonna need this is a 16 ounce package of lima beans. Now some people say, oh, you need to soak these overnight. Uh, no, you don't. I never have. You're gonna need a crock pot to cook this in. I like a big crock pot. Now, 
The other thing you're going to need is beans don't flavor themselves. I mean, they have a good flavor, but beans need help. So what I did when I cut up that ham is uh, I saved my ham bone. And um, I saved my ham bone. So I've got some some carrots I like to put in mine. I've got some leftover celery I want to get rid of. I hate wasting food. Here's my ham bone. So it's just basically, I cut up the ham and I kept the ham bone. I left a lot of meat on it. Uh, this, this ham bone is going to add a ton of flavor to your beans. You really can't make ham without it. Now I've got, uh, we're going to need up to four cups of chicken broth. Now you can put anything in here you want. Most, the basic recipe is beans, ham bone, chicken broth, salt and pepper, and onion. But I like to jazz mine up a little bit. And I like lots of onion. So we're gonna get a yellow onion here. And we're gonna use that as well. So there's my yellow onion. So these are all the things that I'm gonna to add to the to the thingy. Now, um, start off with a clean crock pot, of course, and then I like to just wipe mine out because it's been in the cabinet for a week or two, so. I'm just gonna wipe it out. I also gotta find the lid. The key to crock pot cooking is low and slow. So this is if you buy cheap cuts of meat, sometimes they tend to be a little bit tough. Crock pot cooking will take care of the tough meats. You won't have any tough meats anymore. All right, so first things first, take your ham bone. Now, I'm gonna caution you against salting this uh, because you, you've got salt in your chicken broth. The ham has been cured, so it's got some salt in it. Don't get over or carried away with your salt when you're, when you're making this recipe. The first thing I do is I put the ham bone in the bottom of the crock pot. Just dump it in there, just like that. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I have some additional ends and pieces of ham and I'm gonna put them in there as well because we're never gonna eat all this ham in the form of sandwiches. And there's a lot of end pieces with rind and all that adds flavor. All that adds a ton of, see how I've got this bag of ham here. So uh, there's a lot of, there are a lot of pieces like this that, you know, they aren't really suitable for ham steaks like these are, these bigger pieces. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some of these out of here, like this, uh, you know, ham pieces, like this size. You see how they have the rind on them still? Now this is fully cooked, so it's safe to eat. Um, but I'm just gonna throw them in there. You can tear them up if you want to. You know, just kind of rip them up and throw them in there. This is what I like to do with the end pieces because they're gonna fall, by the time you're done cooking these beans, these end pieces are gonna fall apart and they're just gonna make a delicious, flavorful, uh, yeah, fl uh, just give a wonderful flavor to your, to your beans. And put as little or as much in there as you want. Lots of ham. So I paid $14 for this ham a week and a half ago. We probably had, well, I don't know, five or six meals off of it. You know, you go out today and buy two burgers and fries and a soda and it's, it's $14 for two people. It's ridiculous. And the food is horrible. I mean, it's, fast food is not something I would recommend not healthy it doesn't really taste good once you've had homemade food home cooked food you just you know there's not go there's no going back and part of this 
part of these videos is to show you it doesn't really take a lot of work. If you love your family, it doesn't take a lot of work to cook a delicious meal. It requires a little prep. So I've got my cutting board here. And I'm going to start cutting up my vegetables. Now, a lot of people are like, Joe, you're going to put carrots in with lima beans? Well, yeah, probably, because I really like carrots. You know, so I'm just going to, you know, and I have them, so why not? I'm not even cutting them up. These are these little, you know, little mini baby carrots. So I'm just throwing them in there. Yeah, because they add flavor. If you don't like them, don't eat them. That's what I tell people. All right, now I need to concentrate because I'm going to cut up an onion. And I like big... Keep in mind, this is going to cook in the crock pot for, I don't know, what, six hours? So, it's going to... Uh, pretty much liquefy these vegetables and that's what I wanted to do I want to get I only want the flavor out of the vegetables so you don't really need to dice your onion really fine or anything like that and if you're too lazy to cut up an onion you can put onion powder in there so I do a rough cut on my on my onions I just kind of cut them in half and then cut them in quarters and and always, I always put my meat at the bottom of the crock pot. So there you go. So there's about the, so there's about how I cut my onions. Okay, and then just you know throw them in. Throw them in. Now the next ingredient I'm I'm, I'm going to add. Now I'm wondering if I should do two onions because I really love onions in my beans. But I'm going to be I'm going to be a good boy. I'm going to be a good boy. A lot of people, the next item I'm going to put in there, a lot of people are like, ah, I hate celery. Yeah, but it adds such a wonderful, such a wonderful flavor to anything you cook. And by the time all this is cooked, you're not even going to recognize the celery anymore because it's going to fall apart. But I like, I just love the flavor it adds to the beans so I'm gonna I'm gonna add it um, I don't like the white ends of the celery because they're they get kind of bitter so you know I cut that off I never I never learned how to uh, use a knife properly so a lot of you are probably in the, over there screaming that's not how you cut yeah probably you're probably right but it's how I cut I've only had one bad experience with a knife. Oh, come on now. Got to get a repair kit for that faucet. I've only had one bad experience with a knife when I was about 15 or 16, and I worked in a Mexican restaurant, and I wasn't paying attention, and I filleted my finger and ended up down to the bone ended up having about 23 stitches so that taught me a valuable lesson <laughs> when that happened um, and again I'm a big fan of celery you can leave it out if you don't like it but I love celery I just love the flavor the taste it gives food now this recipe I'm doing it calls for four cups of chicken stock and don't don't or chicken broth and don't do not cheap out on your chicken broth, okay? Well, get a brand you trust. This is from our local grocery store. It's I've had great success with it. It's very flavorful. It's not it's not too dang salty. And um, yeah, I've, it makes for good meals. Now again, you can add any other seasonings in here you want. Some people add bay leaves, some people add thyme, rosemary, whatever. Whatever your little heart content, heart's content. You're not going to add any water because water just kind of, eh. I don't like water. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my beans. I, I do wash my beans, so I'm going to put the beans in a colander 
in the sink and I'm gonna give them a rinse and then I'm gonna pick out any ugly beans and I'll show you what I mean by ugly beans. Just open them up, pour them into my colander. And what you're looking for is, um, let me get an example of something you don't want. These. See how it's kind of oddly colored and yeah, I don't want that bean in my beans because uh, I'll get, you know, yeah. Uh, but basically, go through and just rinse them. Some people say you should soak these overnight. I never have. Here's a good example of the bean you don't want. There's a good example of a bean you don't want in there. See how it's lost its outer coating and it's just, yeah. It, it might be a little mealy. Okay, so you've rinsed them. You're good. Now that's not a lot of beans. Can you see that? That's not a that's not a whole lot of beans. But trust me, they're gonna get really, really big in this pot. And then I just pour them right on the top. There we go, right on the top. All right, now comes the fun part. Now, this can take up to four cups of chicken stock. What you wanna do is you wanna fill your crock pot with enough liquid to be two inches above the beans. So if the beans are up here, you want the, the liquid to be two inches higher than that. So it might take five cups, it might take six cups. So I've got all this chicken broth, some I've had in the refrigerator sitting there, and I'm just going to, we're just gonna add it to it. Now I'm gonna be cooking these beans for about six to eight hours. Um, so I'm starting them at 10 a.m. That means they'll cook until about 6 p.m. Actually about 5 p.m. is when we'll eat. So they'll cook about seven hours and I'm gonna cook them on low. I'm not gonna cook them on high. Okay, you, don't want your, you don't want your beans to dry out. So I'm gonna move some stuff around and bring some of the vegetable up and mix the beans down in there. All right, so. See if I can show this, this thing is gonna be heavy. Okay. So see where the liquid level is? Can you see that? You want a little bit more liquid in there than that, just a little bit higher, but you can see the, the mash up it's made. So now you know why I use this crock pot. This is the secret to cooking Spanish rice and to adding flavor, chicken flavor to everything. Nora makes it, there are several brands that make it. However, this contains something you need to be aware of. The primary ingredient in this is salt. So if you're on a salt sensitive diet, you may not want to do this. Or, this also has soy in it. So. Some people can't tolerate soy. Soy in big quantities is not good for you. I always add just a smidge of this because I like the flavor. It kind of it's it's better for you than putting just plain salt in it. So <laughs> you see that right there? Yeah, we'll remedy that. Okay, so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this uh, caldo de pollo on the top. That'll be our salt replacement, and then. The other thing I'm gonna do, you can see we like garlic in this family. That We've had this about a month. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of minced garlic, but we, we love it. Garlic is good for you. So I'm gonna be as generous as I can with this garlic and pour it in there. Then I'm gonna stir this up to get that all mixed in there. Now you can add a little cracked pepper if you like a little spice. Um, don't overdo it with your pepper. A lot of people can't handle a lot of pepper, but I'm gonna put some. And I like to use the big, oh, 
coarse ground pepper. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this in there. You know, and it's just, you develop a style for recipes over the years. That's enough, that should be enough pepper. I don't wanna blow the top of my head off. And uh, we'll mix that in. You're gonna put the lid on it and leave it the hell alone for the next seven to eight hours. So there you go. Um, and then you gotta clean up your mess, of course. I guess I could have put all these carrots in there. I just, yeah. I like to chew on raw carrots. Alrighty, here we are, a few hours later. And voila. We have our beans. And they are cooked perfectly. So they've swollen up. Here's our here's our pork bone. You can see how the bone is separated right there. And the meat has just gotten all nice and tender and fallen right off the bone. Here's what's left of the bone. Just a little meat left on it. So, and, um, yeah, it's very soupy. It's not as thick as I like it. You can see that knuckle, the pig's knuckle, is still falling apart there. So it's going to cook a little while longer. And normally I like a little less soupy than this, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and make some rice, just some white rice to go with this. I need my rice bowl or my rice pan. It's this one. You want to know how to make rice? Yeah, don't use that minute rice crap. We're going to make rice. We're going to do it the right way. Whole grain rice. Or long grain rice. You can eat brown rice if you prefer. I just like, I just like long grain white rice. Here we go. So it's real simple. I have a mix of salt and pepper right here. So I, uh, Take that, pour it in there. I do a two to one ratio of water to rice, so it'll be two cups of water and one cup of rice. And the other thing I do is I put a pat of butter in my rice. There's, there's roughly two cups. key to rice, there we go, so there's two cups. The key to rice is don't take the lid off. So we'll uh, pour the water in. Go ahead and turn the stove on to high. Let that come to a boil. And I got some moisture here on my countertop. I'll dry that off. I always, I always keep uh, like an old butter dish here. I always keep butter out. So we're gonna, yeah, butter butter keeps a long time, especially salted butter. It's a natural preservative. Put a little butter in there. So yeah, there's the parsley. I actually have some. So just closer here. So I'm just gonna take some parsley. Water's almost coming to a boil. All right, so we take our rice. See the water's boiling. Dump it in there. Bring it back up to a boil. Spread the rice around. I always use a fork. Just old habits. All 
All right, see how it's boiling again? Put the lid on. Turn it down to one. Okay, set your timer for 20 minutes. And have faith and leave it alone. All right, so my timer is telling me that my rice is done. So I'm gonna uh, hit the timer, I'm gonna turn the heat off, and then I'm gonna pull the rice off the burner and I'm gonna, see all that steam coming out? Yeah, get rid of the steam. Then I'm gonna set another timer for five minutes and then I'm gonna fluff my rice. Now meanwhile, my little, uh, I love this oven, your little toaster oven. I got the cornbread heating up in there. I just put it in there for 325 for 10 or 15 minutes. So we'll come back <coughs> and uh, we'll see if the cornbread's heated through. Uh, and then we'll be able to uh, make our plates and fluff our rice. But I want to let the that steam get out of that rice so it fluffs okay. I'm going to put the lid back on now. So we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so our timer's done. So let's... Uh, Let's fluff our rice. So I just take a fork and there you go. Rice, rice is perfect. Beautiful. All right. So there we go. Rice is ready to go. <clears throat> now let's check our cornbread. Got another minute and 26 seconds. Meanwhile, we'll get some get some bowls out. Get some paper plates for our cornbread. There you go, folks. I like your cornbread. And there you go. Time to go eat. So there you go, a hearty meal. Now, granted, this one took all day to cook, but you can throw this stuff in your crock pot at the beginning of the day when you're headed out the door for work. Uh, turn it on, let it cook, and come home. You, you, the fragrance fills the house. There's nothing like uh, fresh cooking uh, when you come home or baked bread, that kind of thing. Um, and it fills your belly with delicious food that is uh, healthy for you and uh, filling. And, you know, we'll get a couple of meals out of this crock pot uh, meal. I, yeah, I don't want to eat it every day, but. Um, you know, it, it makes great for, for leftovers too. And there were plenty of leftovers, trust me. Now, one thing you got to be aware of is when, whenever you use a pork bone in a meal, you might have small bits of bone break off. So disclaimer, make sure that don't just take a heap and gob of food, take small bites and make sure you don't have any little bone bits in your food. Uh, you don't want to swallow a bone. It can, you know, can mess up your stomach. Uh, but that's one of the risks you take when you use a ham bone and anything like this. They can, they can, as the, as the meal cooks, as the food cooks, it can break down and the bone can, you don't get splinters as much as you do little pieces. So just be aware of it. And I tell you this because my spouse almost small, uh, swallowed a bone chunk while we were eating this, but it was delicious. Now, if you don't like lima beans, you can use something else. If you don't like celery, leave it out. You don't like carrots in it, leave it out. Uh, I probably used a little too much liquid in this one, so that's why I chose to go ahead and make some rice to sop up some of that, some of the soupy, soupy stuff. You could have also made a roux, which is flour and water, and mixed it in there, or even cornstarch and water, mix it in there, and it would have thickened it up a little bit more. Now, tomorrow, 
The day after this, after it sits in the refrigerator, it'll get nice and thick again. And then you can just put it into a pot and reheat it and have it the next day or even freeze it and have it weeks later. So, um, yeah, I love to cook and this was a lot of fun. And, and lima beans are one of my favorite meals to cook. The ham was on sale. We're still eating the ham. Tonight we're going to have homemade scalloped potatoes with ham. So there's no end when you buy a big ham like this as to how many times you can eat a meal from it. But anyway, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please, oh, give us a thumbs up down below if you like the video. There you go. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click the notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out. Donate if you're so inclined, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube join function, uh, or become a pay, uh, or, I'm sorry, become a YouTube premium member. I misspoke there. It gets rid of all the ads and you, and you help all of your content providers on YouTube get a little piece of that pie. So it's, it's helpful to all of us. Please come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see all of you on the other side.